The movie opens about 15 years ago in the beautiful land of Kashmir, where Noor, a young 13-year-old boy, appears to be rowing his boat. With a lantern in his hand, the boy carefully docks his boat and proceeds to walk towards the city. Just then, a mysterious figure suddenly appears from underneath the water and tightly grabs him. Scared and anxious, Noor tries to fight off the man but ends up failing miserably. The stranger continues to drag the little boy along with him while the latter begs to be let go. Eventually, the stranger, who happens to be a deadly forces Noor to help him. He threatens the latter and orders him to get some food. Noor, now scared of his wits, timidly agrees to the demands and runs back home to get some food. After making sure that his family is fast asleep, he packs all the leftover food in his house and returns back. He then hands over the food along with a piece of warm cloth. Within moments, starts devouring the food while also telling Noor about his deeply upsetting story. It turns out that among five, he's the only one to have survived this long. The rest had all been brutally murdered by the military. When Noor hears the story, however, as soon as the two arrive at their destination, the military appears out of nowhere and warns the quietly come out of hiding. Visibly scared, it immediately runs out of the house and disappears into the night. The next morning, Noor wakes up and immediately starts sketching a portrait of the deadly Since he's from a lower middle-class family in Kashmir, his sister and brother-in-law work as carpenters who carve out elegant windows and artifacts. Some days, even Noor helps his family members in their business. However, other than making wooden figures, he also happens to be exceptionally talented in sketching and designing. Due to this, he often spends his time creating all sorts of art. As the movie progresses, Noor's sister, Ruxar, tells her husband, Junid, that the Begum has called him to her house in order to fix some windows. Since this job would pay them quite suitably, Junid decides to take Noor along with him. Thus, early the next morning, both Noor and Junaid get ready and travel through the snowy roads of Kashmir. Halfway through, the latter proceeds to tell Noor all about Begum Hazrat Jehan, a rich widow whose family is as influential as can be. He then goes on to say that even though the Begum is incredibly generous, she's also very strict. Any sort of mischief would be punishable. A while later, Noor and his brother-in-law finally reach a large mansion. As soon as they get there, the two try to be on their best behavior and immediately begin working on the windows. During their break, Noor somehow manages to sneak out of the mansion and wander into the nearby woods. There, he begins playing with his slingshot. However, just as he's about to hit one of the trees, he sees a little girl riding a gorgeous white horse. Enchanted by the girl's beauty, Noor keeps on staring at her. Soon after, the little girl, whose name is Ferdos, approaches him and asks him to look away. When Noor doesn't listen, she angrily snatches his slingshot. She then stares at him for quite a while before eventually walking away. Later that night, Noor writes Ferdos' name on his wrist and stares at it intently. Having fallen in love with her, he becomes excited to go back to the mansion again. The very next day, while Junaid and Noor are still working on the repairs, Ferdos approaches them and asserts that her mother, the Begum, has asked for Noor to visit her. Nervous yet intrigued, Noor instantly stops working and timidly follows Ferdos into the mansion. While the two are walking, Noor asks Ferdows for his slingshot but the latter just ignores him. Instead, she quietly leads him to her mother's chamber and asks him to behave. Once there, the Begum carefully observes Noor and then proceeds to offer him a job. It turns out that Hazrat, who is still in mourning, never leaves her mansion. Because of this, she needs someone to do all her work like shopping going to the post office, taking care of the horse stable and so forth. In addition to that, she also requires someone who can become Ferdas's friend and play with her. Since Noor is perfect for the job, the Begum offers him a handsome salary and asks him to come to the mansion every day. However, she also goes on to warn him to not fall in love with Ferdas as thought would bring nothing but pain. As expected, Noor readily agrees to the job. Just as she's about to leave, Hazrat looks at him for the last time and politely asks him to wear nicer clothes from now on. Unable to refuse, Noor immediately agrees and runs back home. There, he tells his sister about the job offer. Elated, Ruxer sews all of Noor's worn-out clothes and wishes him the best of luck. She even advises him to work earnestly as this little job could easily change his life for the better. From the next day onwards, Noor regularly goes to the mansion and does everything that is required of him. He quickly learns how to take care of the stables while Ferdos just watches him from afar. Days pass by and soon, the two begin to get closer and closer. Noor always tries to make Ferdos happy while the latter teaches him several new things. Eventually, the two end up spending every passing second with one another. During this time, Noor even tries to confess his love to Ferdos, but the latter just shuts him down. A couple months later, on the 14th of October, Ferdows finally accepts Noor as her friend and asks him to always remember the special day. She then ties a beautiful scarf around his wrist, claiming it to be a memento of their friendship. Needless to say, Noor looks at Ferdows in awe and thanks her for the gift. However, unbeknownst to him, the Begum watches all this from afar. She smiles at the two children and reminisces about some blissful moments of her life. Soon after, Ferdows's birthday comes up and Noor gets ready to attend the party. While he's walking towards the mansion, he runs into his sister who compliments his attire. The two are about to meet when suddenly, a massive explosion occurs, killing Ruxar on the spot. 
Worried, Nor immediately runs towards his sister, only to find out that she has passed away. The expression on his face which was once of happiness and excitement quickly transforms into that of dread and grief. Shortly after, Ruxar's funeral is planned. June 8, Nor and all the villagers pay their respects before finally burying her into the ground. Whilst this is happening, Nor suddenly remembers about Ferdows's birthday and rushes to the mansion. When he finally reaches his destination, he calls out to Ferdows and tries to apologize. But much to his dismay, he comes to find out that she has already been sent to a boarding school in London. Begum Hezrat, who had learned about Noor and Ferdows' increasing proximity, didn't like the fact that a low-class boy had fallen in love with an aristocrat. After seeing Noor's devastated face, Hazret starts mocking him for not listening to her warnings. She then demands he become someone influential in his life in order to be recognized as Ferdas's equal. Scared, Noor tries to leave but Hazret continues on and advises the little boy to hold on to his heartbreak. Eventually, Noor breaks free and runs out whilst the Begum calls out to him, urging him to stay alive. Heartbroken, Noor becomes lost in his own world. The sudden loss of both his sister and Ferdows affects him to the core. Now determined to become a high-ranking individual, the little boy works day and night to improve his talent. Soon, years pass by and Noor finally grows up to become a handsome young man. Still completely in love with Ferdows, he thinks about her every single day while serving as Junaid's apprentice. One day, while he's working, Begum Hazrat arrives at his workplace and complains about how he never comes to visit her. She then walks in whilst observing and admiring all his art. Thoroughly impressed, she praises his skill and even purchases some of his work. After a brief conversation, she begins to leave. However, that's when Noor musters up all the courage he has and asks her about Ferdows. Intrigued, Hazret tells him that Ferdows is now in Delhi and seemingly alright. The very next day, a well-recognized individual visits Junaid and Noor and informs them that the latter has been selected for an art scholarship. It turns out that Noor has been awarded a scholarship that aims at promoting young Indian artists. Excited, Junaid asks about the sponsor only to find out that the latter has wished to remain anonymous. The individual then goes on to tell Noor that he has to attend a residential art school in Delhi where all his monthly expenses will be funded by the anonymous sponsor. Noor initially assumes that the sponsor has become Hazrat as she had been the only one to ever admire his art. However, he quickly ignores this fact and just focuses on the golden opportunity present before him. Shortly after, Noor packs up and gets ready to embark on his new journey. He immediately travels to Delhi and settles down in his hostel room. Sadly, he gets little to no sleep because of all the music playing in the background. The next morning, Noor looks out of his balcony and sees a massive buffet table laid across the courtyard. Intrigued, he walks downstairs and observes all the other school residents. Amongst them is Arif, a wealthy heir who just so happens to be Begum Hazrat's nephew. As soon as the two meet, Arif tells Noor all about the school and even talks to him about the Begum. Needless to say, they get along really well which ultimately results in Arif inviting the latter to a high society party later that afternoon. After some time, Noor goes to the school's gallery where he meets the gorgeous Lena Becker. Assigned as Noor's mentor, Becker shows him around the gallery and even gives him a few pointers to improve his art. She then tells him about the India Art Summit occurring in six weeks, where his talent will be showcased in front of a massive audience. Excited about the exhibition, Noor thanks Becker for the opportunity and nervously walks away. Later that night, Arif and Noor attend the party together. Initially, Noor becomes overwhelmed by his surroundings but somehow manages to calm his nerves. He then continues looking around until one of his friends suddenly approaches a gorgeous, young lady. Much to his surprise, the lady happens to be none other than Ferdows. When Noor realizes this, he becomes completely dumbfounded. On the contrary, as soon as Ferdows recognizes Noor, she happily approaches him and chats with him. After talking for quite a bit, she returns back to her friends. As the party progresses, Ferdows spends her time dancing with her friends while Noor just stares at her. Soon after, almost everyone at the party begins to leave. Noor instantly takes this opportunity to approach Ferdows and talk to her. The two catch up with one another which eventually leads Noor to realize that Ferdows actually has a boyfriend. Despite being hurt, he tries hardest to stay calm. Ferdows then goes on to tell Noor all about her education and career. Finally, the night ends and Noor quietly returns back to his life. Even after realizing that the love of his life has now moved on, Noor doesn't let his hopes die. Instead, he becomes more determined than ever and puts all his heart and soul into his art. As days pass by, Noor learns more and more about art and sculptures. At the same time, his interactions with Ferdas also become much more frequent. Just like old times, the two begin to get closer. They visit various sites together and instantly click. On the other hand, with the exhibition coming soon, things start to get a lot hectic for Noor. Determined to leave a mark, he presents his idea to Lena and immediately starts working on the project. He works day and night to transform his dream into reality. Finally, the day of the exhibition arrives and as expected, all of Noor's art gains a lot of attention. Several influential people, artists and even the media become impressed by his talent. 
Just when he's explaining his art to the media, Ferdows enters the summit. She directly walks over to Nora and praises him for such a beautiful yet deep concept. The latter thanks her for the compliment and continues on with his presentation. After the exhibition ends, Arif, Ferdows and Nor board a train and proceed to head back home. Midway through, Nor gets enchanted by Ferdows and tries to kiss her. However, the latter quickly pushes him away and reminds him that she has a boyfriend with whom she's going to get engaged soon. She then goes on to explain that her boyfriend, Bill, is a Pakistani diplomat whose father used to be a very powerful minister. When Noor hears this, he becomes reminded of the fact that he's still not equal to Ferdows. In fact, he comes to realize that no matter how successful he becomes, Ferdows would never marry him. Despite this, he's adamant on keeping her close. In his heart, he is still determined to fight for his love. Later that day, while Ferdows is working, she gets a call from her mother. She instantly picks up and greets the begun happily. The two chat for a while until Hazred asks Ferdows about Noor. Confused, the latter doesn't reveal much. However, the begum sternly warns her not to repeat the same mistake again. She then gently reminds her daughter that she's only supposed to marry someone whose status is equal to her. Soon after, Ferdows hangs up and continues with her work. The following day, Ferdows goes to Noor's room in order to check on him. Once there, she carefully observes all of the scattered sculptures across the room. Right at that moment, Noor sneakily clicks her picture and comments that he now has a part of her. Confused, Ferdows stays silent whilst Noor continues admiring her beauty. Shortly after, the two attend a party and have a great time. Noor even manages to blend in with all the other students and learns a lot about the high-class society. Whilst talking, he looks at Ferdows who then invites him into her home. Once inside, the two talk for quite a while and spend almost all their time together. As time passes, Noor's fame starts to reach new heights. He begins to get several clients willing to buy his art at a very high price. Soon, he earns enough money to buy a gorgeous car. Immediately after purchasing the magnificent vehicle, Noor drives to Ferdow's place and offers her a ride. The latter readily agrees and eventually, the two go on a long drive. At one point, Ferdows gets a call from the Begum. However, she just hangs up knowing full well that her mother would never approve of her hanging out with Noor. Unable to control her feelings anymore, she decides to forget all of her restrictions and just enjoys herself with Noor. In the evening, Noor and Ferdows drive all the way up to Taj Mahal and admire the scenic beauty there. The two spend their time alone with their arms wrapped around each other. Just as the two are about to kiss, Noor's phone suddenly starts ringing. He hurriedly picks up the call only to find out that he has been accepted to a big gallery show in London. When Noor shares this news with Ferdows, she kisses him on the cheeks and heartily congratulates him. Soon after, the two go to a party and celebrate Noor's success. Everyone present there congratulates Noor and wishes him all the best for his future endeavors. The latter politely thanks all his well-wishers and continues enjoying the party. Eventually, Noor gets extremely drunk and approaches a very solemn Ferdows. Unable to handle himself anymore, he confesses all his feelings to her. He asserts that ever since he laid eyes on her, he hasn't been the same. In response, Ferdows just smiles and pulls him to the dance floor. She then holds his hand and dances to the melodious rhythm. The two dance together for a short while before heading towards Noor's room. Once inside, Noor walks over to all his veiled portraits and starts removing the covers one by one. It turns out that every single painting that he has ever made is of Ferdows. Every single moment that he spent with her had been painted onto a canvas. Needless to say, Ferdows is astounded to see this. She becomes incredibly emotional and tries to leave. However, Noor stops her just in time and proceeds to caress her soft face. Soon, one thing leads to another and the two end up kissing passionately. With desire seeping through every part of their body, they get lost in each other's touch and make love for the rest of the night. The next morning, Noor happily wakes up and ties his favorite scarf around his neck. It turns out that the scarf is the same one that Ferdows had given to him a long time ago. When the latter sees this, she just laughs and calls him unbelievable. Just then, she gets a call from her mother. Ferdows carefully picks up the call and talks to the begum who begins complaining about how her health keeps on deteriorating. Worried, she assures her mother that she'll visit really soon and hangs up. She then immediately packs up her things and walks out, leaving Noor disgruntled. Just as she's about to leave, Noor asks Ferdows if she'll meet him soon. However, the latter doesn't answer his question. With everything that's happened between them, Noor begins to think that Ferdows is in love with him as well. Now relieved, he gets a tattoo of her name and waits for the perfect time to show it to her. Unfortunately, his wishes cease to come true. One day, Noor suddenly gets a letter from Ferdows which sadly states that she's leaving. In the letter, the latter tells Noor that she's happy to have met him and wishes him all the best. However, due to some unfortunate circumstances, things would never work out between them. Needless to say, Noor is devastated and doesn't know what to do. Determined to find Ferdows, Noor soon travels back to Kashmir. Once there, he immediately goes to the Begum's mansion and tries to look for her. However, he ends up running into Hazrat herself. When the latter sees him, she greets him cheerily and asks him about his undying love for Ferdows. She then informs him that Ferdows is also at the mansion. Hearing this, Noor hastily begins calling out to her. As expected, Ferdows walks down to the living room and greets Noor. 
who is now dumbfounded at the lack of guilt on her face. Enraged, he lashes out at Ferdaus for leaving so suddenly. However, this infuriates Ferdaus, who then yells at him for following her. She tells him that they're not children anymore and even informs him that Bilal is coming to visit her soon. After seeing Ferdaus's nonchalant persona, Noor becomes deeply offended. He tries to walk out but that's when Hazret stops him. In an attempt to mock him, she asks him to take some money from her that was previously due. Nor quickly understands that this act is only to make fun of his low-class status. However, despite the insult, he stays silent and wonders what sin he had ever committed to receive such painful punishment. Suddenly, the scene changes to a flashback which shows the gorgeous Begum Hazret walking down a path. Almost ethereal, the Begum looks quite young and charming. Just as she's walking, she gets swooped in by a handsome young man named Mufti. It's evident that the two are madly in love. Whilst talking, Hazret sadly tells her lover that her marriage has been fixed. She then begs him to do something so that they can be together. But since Mufti himself is from a lower caste, he isn't capable of doing anything. Instead, he has to watch the love of his life get married off to some aristocrat. As days pass by, the two lovers continue meeting in the forest where no one can see them. At one point, Hazret even tells Mufti that if they don't take a step now then they'll be separated forever. In response, the latter just tells her to calm down. However, things suddenly take a turn for the worse when Hazret finds out that she's pregnant. With no other option left, she packs up her bags and tries to elope with Mufti. She sneakily grabs all her jewels and runs off to meet her lover. Eventually, the two get on a bus and prepare to leave. However, just as they're about to move, Mufti tells Hazret that he's going to buy a bottle of water and gets off the bus. The latter understands and patiently waits for him. However, when Mufti doesn't return, Hazret gets off the bus herself and looks around. Much to her dismay, Mufti was nowhere to be found. He had betrayed her. Soon enough, Hazret comes to realize that Mufti had never intended to marry her. He had lured her only to steal all the jewels. That night, Hazret sobs violently, unable to process the betrayal that she has just faced. The scene now changes back to the present where Begum Hazret appears to be reciting a prayer whilst tears stream down her eyes. On the other hand, Noor quickly returns back to Delhi and starts working on his project. Since his art auction is only three days away, Lena demands that he create a masterpiece as soon as possible. However, Noor just can't seem to stay focused. Unable to control his feelings anymore, he tries to call Fridaus. However, the latter doesn't pick up. Turns out that ever since Bilal came to India, the two have been busy organizing a political campaign. Finally, the day of the auction arrives and Noor's painting thankfully gets sold to the same gentleman who had initially told him about his art scholarship. Confused, Noor stares at the man for a long time until Ferdaus arrives at the scene. Completely dumbfounded, Noor stares at Ferdaus as she cheerily walks into the auction with Bilal and his father, Salman. Now more desperate than ever, Noor takes a seat close to Ferdaus and stares at her intently. When the latter notices this, she becomes extremely uncomfortable and walks out of the auction. However, Noor doesn't give up and follows her into the backyard. There, he confesses to Ferdaus that he's madly in love with her. In response, the latter just laughs and tells him that they don't even know each other properly. She then goes on to tell him that she can't give up her reputation and financial status for love. Since Bilal is a Pakistani diplomat with a bright future, he would be the perfect match for her. When Noor hears this, he is deeply hurt. He tries to convince Ferdaus but the latter just gets annoyed and angrily tells him that her engagement is in two days. Shortly after, Ferdaus returns back to Bilal whereas Noor goes to the bar and starts drinking. Furious, he stares at Ferdaus whilst getting absolutely wasted. Eventually, Arif notices Noor's condition and pulls him out of the auction. He then tries to explain to the latter that pursuing Ferdaus will only ruin him. Concerned, Arif tells Noor that people like Ferdaus and Bilal and classists, and elitists who look at poor people like scum. However, this comment just infuriates Noor when angrily shoves Arif away from him. Enraged, he insults the latter and proceeds to drink even more. Now completely wasted, Noor stumbles towards Ferdaus and calls out to her. He then looks at Bilal and starts insulting him. Soon enough, the situation gets out of hand as Ferdaus and Bilal immediately exit the auction while several guards try to stop Noor from causing any more chaos. Within moments, all his hard work and fame go down the drain. Media and several influential people look at Noor with concern as the police arrest him. On the other hand, this little incident creates a rift between Bilal and Ferdaus. The two get into an argument which eventually ends with Bilal warning Ferdaus to never let such an incident come to light again. The latter timidly agrees whilst thinking of Noor's angry outburst. Meanwhile, Noor somehow gets saved by Junid who helps bail him out of jail. After being released, the two go back to Noor's residential room and discuss their future prospects. Emotional, Noor begs his brother-in-law for forgiveness and sadly claims that his future is now ruined. The scene now shifts back to Ferdaus who seems to have returned back to Kashmir. There, she drowns herself in sorrow and keeps thinking about Noor. While she's in her room, Begum Hazret approaches her and asks her to forget about the past. However, Ferdaus doesn't agree and goes on to say that marrying someone like Billa will never make her happy. After all, she'd be nothing more property. When Hazret hears this, she immediately shuts Ferdaus down and asks her to do what is right. 
She asserts that high-class people must always think of their family before their happiness. Soon after, Hazrat starts talking about how she had made the same mistake years ago. That mistake eventually ruined her life and cursed her to be miserable and lonely for eternity. Ferdows tries to intervene but that's when Hazrat berates her for being ungrateful. It turns out that Ferdows was never Hazret's daughter. In fact, she was the daughter of a maid who had died during childbirth. As soon as Ferdows was born, she had been placed in front of the Begum. From that moment on, Begum Hazret had raised Ferdows like her own daughter. Moving forward, Hazret proceeds to tell Ferdows that even though she was technically born into the low class, she had been raised as an aristocrat in order to continue their legacy. Because of this, Ferdows is only allowed to marry a man whose status is equal to her. That way, they could spend the rest of their lives in peace and prosperity. Later that day, Bilal and his entire family arrive at the Begum's mansion for his engagement. As expected, everything goes smoothly and Ferdows officially gets engaged to Bilal. On the other hand, Noor starts packing for his trip to London. After regretting his nonsensical outburst, he now plans to fix everything that had been ruined. He first approaches Arif and profusely apologizes to him. Thankfully, the latter forgives him and even accompanies him to London. Shortly after, Noor and Arif reach the Hayworth Art Gallery in London. Determined to make things right, Noor immediately begins to work on his art. He puts in his blood, sweat and tears to create a grand masterpiece. However, one day while working, Noor comes across an article about Ferdows getting married. This shakes him to the core but he still tries to remain calm. Finally, the day of the exhibition arrives and Noor's art manages to get a lot of appreciation. Everything seems to be going perfectly. However, this doesn't last long as a special guest arrives at the gallery. It's none other than the Begum herself. Initially, Noor is shocked to see Hazret there. However, he quickly comes to find out that she's only there to mock him. The only reason for her visit was to taunt him about his heartbreak. As soon as her purpose is over, Hazret proceeds to walk out of the gallery. Desperate, Noor runs after her and asks her about Ferdos. However, the latter just laughs and asks him to focus on his future. She then drives away, leaving him confused and distraught. Heartbroken, Noor is about to walk back inside when suddenly a mysterious car approaches him. Confused, he looks inside only to find that he had saved decades ago, whose name happens to be Mozem, had somehow managed to become extravagantly rich and reputed. As soon as he sees Noor, Mozem instantly lights up and asks the latter to join him for tea. Curious, Noor agrees to the offer and soon, the two arrive at a luxurious restaurant. Once inside, Mozem reveals to Noor that he is the anonymous sponsor who funded his art scholarship. Additionally, he was also the one who bought all of Noor's blockbuster arts at high prices so as to boost his career. Not only that, he had also helped Noor to get accepted into Hayworth. When Noor learns all this, he is shocked. Anxious, he asks Mozem the reason for his graciousness. In response, Mozem simply tells him that this is just his way of returning a favor. He explains that the military had not only killed his friends but also his two sons whom he loved dearly. He then asserts that the only reason he's alive and successful now is due to Noor's kindness. Because of this very reason, he was determined to make the latter famous and successful. After revealing the entire truth, Mozem simply smiles and claims that he's really proud of Noor. However, the latter just sits there dumbfounded. Enraged, he gets out of his chair and yells at Mozem for lying to him. Instant regret starts filling up his body as he realizes that the Begum was never his sponsor. Instead, it was the he had saved years ago. The money that was used to fund his education was actually from a Initially, Mozem tries to defend himself but Noor doesn't even listen to him. Instead, he storms out of the place, promising to never use his fame again. Shortly after, Noor gets in a taxi and disappears into the night. Whilst traveling, he realizes that the Begum never wanted him to be successful or happy. Instead, she just wanted to see him suffer. All this time, she was only manipulating him. Noor finally comes to terms with the fact that his entire life had been a lie. Now determined to learn the truth, Noor rushes to the Begum's chamber. There, he confronts the latter as to why she had given him hopes of marrying Ferdows. Heartbroken, he asks her why she had pretended to turn him into someone capable of her daughter. In response, the Begum angrily tells him that this was all revenge. It turns out that Hazret had always thought of Noor as Mufti. After noticing him for the very first time, she had started hating him due to his similarities with her lover. Because of this very reason, she had wanted him to suffer and endure unbearable pain of not getting love in return. The scene now shifts to a flashback where Hazret appears to be getting dragged by her father. It turns out that after Mufti ran away, Hazret had tried to go back to her house. However, when her father found out that she's pregnant, he lost his temper. Enraged, he beat her brutally, ultimately causing her to miscarry. Soon after, her parents left her at the mansion all alone and never returned. As a result, Hazret became delusional and resentful of the lower class. Thankfully, after her parents' departure, a loyal maid returned back to Hazret and took care of her. 
However, she soon died after giving birth to a beautiful child. Unable to take care of the baby alone, the maid's husband gave the child to Hazrat, asking her to raise it as her own. Back to the present, when Hazrat finally comes back to her senses, she tries to look around for Noor. However, he is nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, Noor, who had previously stormed out of the Begum's chamber, finally reaches the gallery. There, he rushes towards all his sculptures and sets them on fire, ultimately freeing himself from all the lies and conspiracies used against him. When Hazrat sees this, she begins to feel guilty for all that she did. Unable to handle herself anymore, she walks straight towards the balcony and falls down, ultimately losing her life. Shortly after, Hazrat's body is taken back to Kashmir and buried. Ferdas, who is still shaken by the sudden loss of her mother, just watches the funeral from a window. Just as she's paying her respects to the Begum, one of the mansion's workers comes up to her. The man is none other than her biological father who consoles her for the loss and eventually hands her a locket. When Ferdas looks at the locket, she realizes that her mother had always loved Mufti, even after what he put her through. This makes her realize that if she lets go of Noor, she will regret it forever. Ferdas immediately tries to run to Noor, who also happens to have returned back. However, Bill stops her and warns her not to make the mistake. But despite the threats, she breaks off her engagement and runs to Noor. Noor, who had been waiting for Ferdas, immediately approaches her and kisses her passionately. The movie finally concludes with the two deciding to spend their lives together.